Hello and welcome everyone. Today's presentation is the latest update on sepsis associated disseminated intravascular coagulation. Hemostasis is crucial for preventing excessive bleeding and maintaining the blood flow within the blood vessels. It acts as a defense mechanism against various pathological conditions. In acute illness and critical conditions, it can lead to macro and micro thrombosis contributing to the organ dysfunction due to impaired circulation. Excessive thromboinflammation. While hemostasis can be beneficial, the excess of thromboinflammation can cause tissue malmicrocirculation and subsequent organ dysfunction, highlighting the balance needed in hemostatic responses. After major tissue injury, the systemic hypercoagulation sometimes accompanied by consumption coagulopathy can occur. Patients are diagnosed with DIC based on specific lab criteria. Now, pathophysiologic clinical presentation and treatment options for DIC are very significantly dependent on the underlying cause, with sepsis being the most common and the serious trigger of DIC. Sepsis frequently leads to the thrombotic type of DIC, which is more often associated with organ dysfunction and less commonly with hemorrhagic events. In sepsis-associated DIC, the coagulation status can change dynamically, evolving from a coagulation disorder to sepsis-induced coagulopathy and eventually to an overt DIC, necessitating different treatment approaches at each stage. For compensated DIC, anticoagulation is the primary treatment, whereas for decompensated DIC may require more intensive therapies, including the supplementation therapy. Recent progress in managing sepsis-induced DIC include the development of an early diagnostic criteria, the use of effective anticoagulants, improving the prognosis and treatment outcomes of the affected patients. Regarding the future perspective, ongoing research and advances in understanding the sepsis-associated DIC continue to inform us and help us in refining the diagnostic and therapeutic strategies, aiming to improve the patient outcomes in the complex condition. So in this presentation, we will go deeper into the individual aspects as we have touched over here regarding the diagnosis, pathophysiology and management of sepsis-induced DIC. Now coming first to diagnosis of sepsis associated DIC. DIC is characterized by a systemic activation of the coagulation pathway differing from consumption coagulopathy. This distinction is important for understanding and diagnosing DIC. The International Society of Thrombosis and Hemostasis ISTH defined over DIC criteria in 2001, focusing on thrombocytopenia, prolonged prothrombin time, increased fibrin-related markers, and decreased fibrinogen levels. Overt DIC markers, ISTH also outlined non-overt DIC markers. The diagnostic criteria is based on molecular markers like antithrombin, protein C, thrombin-antithrombin complex. However, the clinical utility of this marker is limited due to the lack of common use of these things in clinical practice. Now, next we have the JAM criteria in response to the need for a more practical diagnostic approach. The Japanese Society of Acute Medicine introduced compensated DIC criteria in 2006, utilizing readily available lab parameters and clinical data. Following the update of the sepsis definition to sepsis 3, the sepsis-induced coagulopathy that is SICK criteria was introduced in 2017 to identify early onset DIC in sepsis. SIC criteria includes sepsis with organ failure defined by SOFA scoring and coagulation disorder based on the decreased platelet count and prolonged PT that is INR levels. SIC criteria simplicity and the is ease of use make it a valuable early diagnosis and timely initiation of anticoagulation treatment in sepsis associated DIC. It is endorsed by the ISTH DIC Scientific Standardization Committee due to its clinical relevance. While JAM DIC criteria are widely used in Japan for diagnosing sepsis associated DIC, the SIC criteria offer advantage in terms of simplicity, cost, suitability for ongoing monitoring 
and SIC criteria have been associated with direct progression to over DIC with disease worsening. Now, the development of SIC criteria highlights the importance of disease specific consideration in diagnosing DIC. There's a suggestion to expand this approach to other forms of DIC, such as the hematological DIC and cancer induced DIC, to develop more targeted and effective diagnostic criteria. Because making just a diagnosis of DIC doesn't really change the management of the patient. The prevalence and mortality of sepsis associated DIC. Now, studies show varying prevalence rate of DIC in sepsis with mortality rate exceeding 30% across different diagnostic criteria, indicating the serious impact of DIC on patient outcomes. Now, the study findings can be summarized as Gando et al. reported an 18.1 incidence of over DIC and a 46.8% incidence of jam DIC in septic patients, with mortality rate of 38.1 and 38.4% respectively. Another study in 1892 septic patients found the prevalence of over DIC, JAM DIC and SIC to be 29.3, 61.4 and 60.8% respectively with mortality rates of 38.4, 33.9 and 32.5%. Now in a cohort of 296 subjects defined by the sepsis 3 criteria, the prevalence of over DIC, modified JAM DIC and SIC were 22.6, 43.2 and 56.1% respectively, with the 28-day mortality being 55.2, 47.7 and 44%. Now, the primary goal of diagnosing the DIC in sepsis is to identify patients who may benefit from timely intervention given the higher risk of mortality compared to the non-DIC patients. Recent studies suggest that anticoagulation therapy may be particularly beneficial in patients with severe disease and coagulopathy, supporting the clinical utility of early and accurate DIC diagnosis. JAM DIC and SIC scores not only serve as diagnostic tools, but also reflect the severity of the patient's condition correlating with mortality rates. A study by Liu et al. involving 9,432 septic patients evaluated the performance of SIC score, finding a 28-day mortality rate of 34% in SIC patients versus 25% in non-SIC patients. Thus, SIC pre presence was identified as an independent risk factor for 28-day mortality with the adjusted odds ratio of 1.52. Performance of the SIC scoring system. Now, the Wang et al. study compared different DIC diagnostic criteria and found that while the area under the curve values are similar across all the criteria, the SIC criteria stood out for its simplicity and had the highest odd ratio that is 5.2% for predicting a death. And the SIC scoring system's negative predictive value for a 28-day mortality was highest at 86.9%, suggesting that a negative SIC effectively lowers the risk of death. Multiple studies have confirmed that SIC score correlates with severity of sepsis, reinforcing its utility in clinical setting. Research by Zhu et al. and Peng et al. demonstrate that heparin therapy was associated with lower mortality specifically in patients identified with SIC and not in those without SIC. This highlights that SIC score's role in identifying candidates who may benefit from anticoagulation therapy is important. The studies suggest that SIC often precedes over DIC, which patients progress from SIC to DIC become worse. This progression underscores the importance of early SIC identification for timely intervention. A potential limitation of the SIC criteria is that the risk of misdiagnosing conditions that mimic DIC such as thrombotic microangiopathy disorders and heparin-induced thrombocytopenia due to its reliance on a limited set of coagulation biomarkers is very important. Differentiating these conditions is essential for appropriate management due to the higher mortality if treated incorrectly. The ISTH provides a flowchart to help with the differential diagnosis of DIC and similar conditions. Factors like antithrombin activity, which is usually decreased in SIC and DIC, but maintained in thrombotic microangiopathy, can aid in the differentiation. Now, how should we treat sepsis-associated DIC? 
Anticoagulation therapy is the mainstay. Despite research, no anticoagulation has conclusively shown efficacy in large-scale RCTs for sepsis-associated DIC. The effectiveness of anticoagulants might be influenced by the clinical variability of sepsis and should be considered mainly for patients with severe disease and coagulation disorders. Heparin, commonly used in septic but lacks strong evidence from large RCTs specifically for in sepsis associated DIC. Meta-analyses suggest unfractionated heparin might reduce mortality in severe sepsis, but these studies did not exclusively focus on patients with coagulopathy or DIC. Heparin's efficacy in sepsis associated DIC remains uncertain, though it's recommended for COVID-19 related coagulopathy. Recombinant thrombomoduline approved in Japan for DIC shows promising results in the subgroup analysis of sepsis-associated DIC with better DIC resolution, lower 28-day mortality compared to heparin in many studies. The SCARLET trial indicates a trend towards better survival in specific subgroup that results were not statistically significant across all the participants. Regarding the role of antithrombin, largest RCT conducted in severe sepsis, not specifically SIC, post hoc analysis suggested a significant reduction in 20 day mortality for DIC patients not receiving heparin. Used in Japan for DIC treatment supported by studies showing mortality benefits. Recombinant antithrombin gamma approved in Japan showing improvement in DIC and SOFA scores in smaller trials. The Japanese guidelines recommend antithrombin and recombinant thrombomoduline for sepsis associated DIC based on the national studies and their respective guidelines. The combination therapy that is preliminary evidence suggests a potential benefit of combining both that is antithrombin with recombinant thrombomoduline especially in severe cases. Now regarding the future perspective, mortality rate remain very high with sepsis and sepsis associated DIC emphasizing the need for specific and effective treatment strategy and early intervention. Evidence suggests that anticoagulant therapy benefit patients with critical illness with coagulopathy disorders, highlighting its potential role in managing sepsis-associated DIC. Sepsis, a condition leading to acute multi-organ dysfunction, is more manageable in the early stages with antibiotic and source control. The complexity increases with the onset of coagulation disorders, underscoring the importance of early detection and intervention. Regular screening and monitoring of coagulation changes in septic patients is crucial, utilizing accessibility, straightforward methods to detect early signs of DIC. Specifically designed for early phase identification of sepsis-associated DIC, the SIC score offers a simple, efficient tool for screening and monitoring, providing valuable alternative to the JAM DIC criteria in Japan. Current treatment choices for sepsis DIC include heparins, antithrombin, recombinant thrombomoduline, However, robust evidence for their efficacy is still lacking, necessitating further research. Designing clinical trials to prove the effectiveness of anticoagulants in sepsis-associated DIC is challenging. Factors include the complexity of setting appropriate endpoints beyond mortality, determining optimal dosages, and the duration of treatment. The activation of the coagulation pathway is a part of body's defense mechanism making the selection of therapeutic option and agents critical in balancing the benefit and risk of anticoagulation very, very critical. There is a call for international collaboration studies to address the gap in understanding and treating SIC. These studies should aim to establish more nuanced endpoints, optimize treatment protocols, and ultimately improve the patient outcome. So the take-home messages are, early detection is key. Prompt identification of the sepsis-associated DIC is crucial for improving patient outcomes, emphasizing the importance of regular monitoring and assessment in septic patients. The SIC criteria developed by the ICSTH DIC Scientific Standardization Committee provides a simple and effective tool for identifying septic patients at risk of over-DIC and death. Beyond standard antimicrobial treatment, few therapeutic agents have been proven. Current treatment are largely supportive, focusing mainly on symptoms and complications. In Japan, recombinant thrombomoduline and antithrombin are recommended and used based on their local studies and guidelines. And there is a significant need for prospective international collaborative studies to explore the potential treatment options, aiming to expand the effective therapeutic options globally. Thank you for your patience.